Tempest finds themselves one game up over E-Star in this best of five. And we are headed to Dragonshire for game number two. Jay How, what do you make of this? Murky. Oh, my. All right. Yesterday, if you guys missed the stream yesterday, we you saw. You missed out. You missed out a lot. Because <laughs> uh, Murky made it into the draft, and it just kind of took everybody by surprise, including their opponent. Uh, we'll see. I, I don't know. I, I think that you kind of release those things, these kind of secret strategies. Somebody's watching. They're going to be like, wait a minute. If they do this, what do we do against it? I don't know if we'll see something as crazy. But as we've seen from E-Star, they'll play traditional. They'll play a little bit wacky. Uh, it doesn't matter what team they're up against. They will bring their own meta to it. Uh, on the side of Tempest, I, I think that, you know, we'll continue to see that global. We saw Dahaka prioritize. We'll see Falstad, I'm sure, prioritized at some point, whether it's in the ban or the picks. And I think those are some likely heroes we'll be looking at. Yeah, I think that if Tempest has what they would really like to get, then we'll see them get the ragnaros Zeratul combo. That combo has been to mixed results, I would say, throughout it, this tournament. Whether... The, the other casters are talking about or whether we're in the back, we've kind of wondered, like, where is the synergy with these Sulfura smashes? Because they, they haven't quite been there. There was actually uh, one that was missed in the middle of that fight, one that landed in uh, rather inconsequential terms. But Gilly, you brought up an interesting fact. I believe you might have even tweeted about it. Something about Tyrael? Yeah, Tyrael has grown exponentially throughout this tournament. Uh, we started today, and the only team who was willing to first pick him was L5. And when L5 weren't getting Tyrael in a draft, they were getting Zeratul because the two have this like weird kind of counter to each other where you can sank to get out of VP, but then you can also VP to waste the sank. So they were going for that. And it, between E-Star and MVP Black, E-Star had Tyrael and Zarya, uh, which they had in the last match for game one and two, uh, at least Tyrael game of uh, both games. And then game three, MVP oh. Black wised up, they ban him, and then they take him four and five. Uh, obviously, it's not one hero that makes a match, but just from the series in the drafts alone and the MVP adaptation to finally pick, first pick Tyrael versus L5, obviously their understanding of the drafting is strong because they are in the grand finals. Uh, yeah, not too bad. Uh, as we see, we talked about a couple of the global heroes Talk about a power play, just take both of them. And so Dahaka and Falstad, the only other one that likely will be there. Uh, Brightwing, maybe we'll see a little bit of Zagara, which generally you'd kind of say no way Zagara, but with E-Star in China, Zagara has kind of been a thing uh, the last few days. I don't know if this is an appropriate time for it. I think that's one of the things you wait towards the end of the draft. But ETC is going to be a hero that is available if you need stage dive, but Mosh Pit also not too shabby. You know, we talked about uh, Tempest and putting Lockdown on a comfort so that he can be one. It's hard because they seem to have devoted a lot of resources to Duck Duck. They had him playing Greymane, and when they switched to putting Lockdown on Li Ming, he was wrecking in the last series of their evening yesterday. So putting Lockdown now onto Falstad, one that a hero he has played for a really long time, I think it's going to work out really well here for Tempest. I love the Zeratul pickup, and I'm actually a little bit surprised that we see Tychus, maybe not that Ragnaros. Maybe they're not afraid of the Ragnaros. You know, we've got the setup with Murden, the Roots, the VP. You've got a lot of things to make stationary targets to make Sulfur Smash a little bit easier. They still need that solo lane hero that can match the Hawk up in the top. If false that opts to go up there, it obviously makes things a little bit more tricky, but a hero that can survive up there is Ragnaros. So we'll see if that comes later in the draft. I don't know if it will with the Zeratul pickup. But uh, Li Ming is still available, and we saw what Zing Si did yesterday with Li Ming. Uh, you got to wonder if some of those heroes will be on the back half, but it's their turn to ban. And if you're looking, you've got to think about that other frontline hero. Will it be the ETC ban? I wonder if the plan is to steal Li Ming away for Tempest. Hmm. Can't decide. Looking at that ban, though, probably... Are they just going to try to run the warrior pull down? Yeah, they're going to be at Diablo. With Diablo, again, maybe you opt to go into something like ETC. He can empower some of those auto attack heroes because of his trait, gives them that extra attack speed. False that is there. Uh, again, I actually would really like the power play. If you take away Li Ming, you give up Vala. If you take Vala, you give up Li Ming. So one way or the other, you're going into two heroes that Zingxi is definitely more than comfortable in playing. So. Right now, I, I don't know if they'll pair it on that backside. It's something that we've seen them run before. Zarya, I think, is an option here as well. Uh, if you opt to go Zarya to Haka, Triple Warrior, 
Not necessarily a Korea and China thing, but we've seen it work other places in the world. And some of these teams said that they've been looking at the EU region recently. You know, you talk about comfort of Xing Chen, and I will say that um, Bala versus Li Ming, I'd be way more scared of his Li Ming. Bala traditionally not doing the hottest in this tournament. She is the most picked hero, but at a 38% win rate, whereas Li Ming is doing far better but she would be able to help the team out with uh, her wave clear. Nazebo kind of makes you think maybe a little bit more Vala as opposed to Li Ming, Superstition at 13. Uh, Zeratul can get on that back line. It makes you take more damage from auto attacks, but a lot of that is ability damage. We'll see if that goes in. Nazebo, I love the Nazebo pickup. You play for the late game, you have the globals. It gives you great control over the battleground, gives you great late game pressure with two globals and a Nazebo who spikes Probably as much as any hero at level 20. I love it, but there's the Ragnaros Li Ming completing kind of what we thought they would go with. Yeah. But you're right. The draft of Tempest is terrifying late game with the Globals and Nazebo. So it's gotta be another minute warrior, right? that E Star gets that combo, it's go time. And really go time, not go time like last game. <laughs> go time never really started, uh, it seemed, the last game, so we'll see if they can get it. Uh, but Tempest, with the last pick here, it is going to be a warrior hero. It would be, I, you know, Anubarek isn't a bad option. Ragnaros, a lot of ability damage. Li Ming, ability damage. Zeratul, yes, he gets a few auto attacks if he goes combo slash at four, but a lot of that is ability damage. And if you're looking to deal with a lot of that, Anubarek, I think, would actually be pretty good here. They do have to go ETC, But they're though. gonna bring the Mega Death instead. Yeah, I mean, strong, I, strong I, pick. I think that ETC is your safer pick, definitely, uh, of course, but I like where you were going with the Anub. I, it's something that I think Misfits started doing. They did it against Dignitas. If you're looking at the Western uh, region over there, we saw a lot of Ragnaros into whatever else, and then they it was kind of like a Medivh. You just saw a lot of ability damage. You're like, well, wait a minute, what if we just, even if you don't get true value out of an Uberak being an offensive hero, you have it as like, oh, just sit here and soak every bit of damage you can throw at me. It, it's not what they picked, but ETC, you, you really can't go wrong. You have a lot of potential, the playmaking hero in ETC, so not a bad pick. We look over at E-Star, and of course, it's going to come down to can they start to get picks of their own? They are going to have Ragnaros in the top lane. Um, we might see some kind of cool rotations early game, especially the, the fact that they have Zeratul. I know, I think it was MVP Black maybe, when they had Zeratul and Murden, they kept rotating them yeah. into the mid and then sending out, trying to constantly look for picks the entire time. Be very cool to see that. They have that fluid mobility, even just Zeratul standing in a bush being like, hey guys, I'm gonna grab a snack. I'll be back in a, a couple <laughs> of minutes. Is You put the fear in your opponents, right? And that fear is needed when you have solo split soaking heroes with globals. If you can prioritize rotating that zero up, which the Korean region has done a lot during the first phase of this HGC season, is using that zero pick on this map. It's a very popular hero. You rotate that up. You get that pick in the top lane. The double globals, you might actually see it used against them. If you leave Tahaka top, you can rotate false that up, and then now you have a double advantage there. You can turn it on your opponent, and then you can use the other global to rotate back down, and you can kind of rotate the, the globals. It's something we've seen a little bit more is using that when you know you have that fail safe with the globals there on two heroes. Yeah, and potentially three, although I think it's very likely that <laughs> already having Falstad and Dahako will be looking at Mosh Pit trying to lock people down. There is sufficient, I would say, uh, interrupts for a Mosh Pit if that's the case, but it only takes one bad setup for your team, and there's a lot of hallways, as I like to call them on Dragonshire, where you can make a Mosh Pit work. A lot of hallways indeed as we take a look at E-Star here. That is going to be Zing C on Li Ming. I love watching him play Li Ming, by the way. Lucian, otherwise known as H, going to be on Murden. X, otherwise known as Savage, will be on Zeratul. SW will be on that Malfurion, and uh, Ragnaros is going to be topping it off there. Ragnaros will be played by Tiger, the such a flexible player for E-Star. You know, he forever was the support player for E-Star, made a brief stint as the warrior player, and now finds himself on this full flex, ranged uh, Zarya, shielding heroes especially. On the other side of the map will be Tempest, with Hyde playing Rhaegar, Lockdown on his Falstad, Duck Duck playing Nazebo, Sign playing ETC, and Modern Life finally will be playing Dahaka. Well, I must say that globals on this map are terrifying. Nazebo late game is terrifying. 
I like where we see Tempest going. Again, a lot's going to come down to X and what he can do on Zeratul. That's, it's always the biggest, and I, I use this term loosely, and right now it actually is very fitting, the X Factor. In this case, it will be X on Zeratul. Zeratul plays that role as the X Factor a lot. You guys, I'm just gonna roll you guys haven't known this, but Jay has been making about six million X jokes. About oh, don't Savage worry. So it's good. The minute he does something, oh, no. unlike last game, it's coming. Oh, gosh. Well, we'll see if it's <laughs> going to be in this game. We're headed into game number two on Dragonshire. is in session for game number two as we head into Dragon Shire. We've talked about the late game possibilities for Tempest, and it is traditionally a battleground that can go to the late game quite easily. Yeah, it's one of the battlegrounds that the DK, it, it continues to amp up and damage the, uh, the Dragonite. Death Knight, this is not World of Warcraft. Hello, Calaris. Uh, <laughs> but Five. the Dragonite, it's where you win Three, the game, but a lot of times two, you kind of see these stall one. tactics if you can't. It, it's it's a very Five, interesting well, battleground. You have to control both points, plus once you're controlling them, channel that in the middle. And it's a very difficult thing sometimes against certain composition, especially that double global. So we'll see. Nice rotation out here, but Sign is going to snip that out of the backside. He's already going in here, and Sing C is going to be first oh. blood in 15 seconds. They are not done. Oh, H able to drop out. But a one-for-one one trade there. A one-for-one, one, but Tiger's in a terrible position. Does get his self heal for a little bit longer and will throw out some damage of his own. Two-for-one in favor of Tempest right off the bat in the early game. He'll clear, clear mid and then send Modern Life packing up to the top. Already more action than last game. They just come out firing. You know, you kind of saw this. All right, we're not going to go the traditional approach. We're going to kind of go this the other way. But Sign's like, well, wait a minute. What if I just kind of check this while the other members stay on the other side? Not too bad. X having to get out of there. The slow, the hammering has hit. Nice disrupt, nice body blocking there by Lucian to save the life, potentially, of Zeratul. Speaking of hammering, Falstad not going for what has kind of become the traditional season marksman. Old school gathering storm, making sure that he can throw out first damage if necessary later on with his hammering. Uh, Wolf Run was highlighted by our observer as well, generally seeing a lot more of lightning bond to have a double lightning shield for the wave clear, but in the instance of the team that Tempest has with Nazebo, um, it's not too much of a concern in this case, wanting to favor having uh, his increased movement speed, and it makes a lot of sense, right? You're trying to run away from Zeratul for potential leaning resets. Oh, I said that sometimes you have a little bit of a delay on getting that Dragonite. Instead, you pick it up at a minute and a half sign. He should be able to take down a tower here. Well, I don't think they're going to get much done elsewhere, but uh, Dragonite getting some early value here. Assaulting this uh, middle fort wall. And that only bodes better and better for Tempest to have a strong late game team. If they're able to get a lot done in the early game too, forcing out Molten Core for defending, but the towers were already taken out. Sign, what do you do with this from here? It's already fairly low. Just going to clear out the wave, buy some time, uh, make E-Star uh, go for the defense, allowing Lockdown to move up, fly up, and join Modern Life looking for a pick on Savage. Yeah, Savage, uh, he's going to be in a very precarious spot. Uh, he really has a huge spike once you get the Seeker in the Dark at level 7. It allows you to hit that burst damage. But we see Tahaka. I think that's one of the reasons why we're not seeing Season Marksman on Fallsad, because it allows him to stay in that four-man rotation or at least flex around, maybe get a yeah. little bit more value out of that hammering uh, with that level 1 talent. So I think that's really going to work well in his favor uh, late game if he can get those uh, stacks in the early game. And Static Shield to help out, too. He it makes him uh, more effective in being able to trade, sail around a little bit longer once you get that lightning uh, rod going on a target too. Just trying to shy away or make Zeratul shy away a little bit, but Tempest have been throwing out aggression everywhere. E-Star constantly is getting interrupted and scared away in rotations. Tempest is just, it, they look very good this series. Uh, so far, I mean, it, they've looked shaky. I mean, obviously they've made it here 
uh, to this uh, final day. And it just kind of seems like they're good, but are they going to be good enough against their counterparts, which they seem to have struggled against with MVP Black and L5? Those teams, though, at times have looked vulnerable. We'll see if they can make it into the uh, the next part of this. But E-Star still hanging around here. Pretty even start, but the zombie wall, and now SW going to go down. Locked on flying down, too. Uh, won't get seasoned marksman stacks off of that kill, but just flying down to make sure they can get the kill. And they can always move up to mid, and they have to hawk it in the top lane, too. So they have the flexibility that E-Star just do not without those globals. Globals are scary. I, I mean, it's moments like that is even if if you had one global, you don't take that risk with false that you take two. Now, all of a sudden, the power slide over the blink out X. Nice. Oh. Thunder burn from H. Lucian making sure that Savage can get away. Here comes Tiger. We're going to try to turn this around. Face melt, additional knockback thanks to the level four talent. And uh, both teams zoning off any aggression, any kills. Stormbolt connects. Xing Chen looking for his resets. Oh, duck, duck. <laughs> <laughs> Not able to get it there. If he had got that kill first, he had dominance at level four, would have right. had a little bit of health. But <laughs> timing, not quite there. That's, that's a little bit frustrating. A little it's like bit a half second. It's like, oh, so close. But it's important for E-Star to get some momentum going this game. If you know, We've already talked about drafting, but just for their mindset. They're already down one game. They're playing versus Korea. We saw the interview where Xing Chen did say, you know, we don't feel like we're at the maximum to be able to get uh, to contest, contend with these Korean teams. And Ragnaros again gets caught with these picks. I, I, you know, we've seen it a lot, and Sign's going to be in there. He should be fine. Zing C, although Zing C unleashing a flurry with that combo there at Calamity at level seven. But the double global, it's almost impossible to push out unless you have eyes on the team. And even if you have eyes on the team, Falstad can fly in in a heartbeat. But if you do not have eyes on the team, you need to play super safe up there, and you just cannot afford to give those up. Yeah, maybe the issue too is. Generally, when we see Ragnaros played for E-Star, it has been Savage, so there is the role swap. Um, and Falstead going down, though. That's a big win for E-Star. Every time that they can get these kills, they desperately needed that, too, because it was right before heroic abilities for Tempest. Yeah, and that's one of the ways to obtain an advantage, get a little bit of experience, and uh, basically take the heat off of you while you try and soak 10. That next uh, Shrine phase uh, You know, is definitely scary. You don't want to give up another DK, as Molten Core has already been used to defend here as Rhaegar and Dahaka holding down the fort. I, I guess that's not a phrase you can really use, holding down the fort. Yeah, sure, they're holding down the fort top lane. Yeah, I would say Ragnaros is holding it down a bit better <laughs> within Molten Core. <laughs> Heroic ability is almost here for Easter. They just need to hold on a little bit longer here in the bottom lane because they do not, again, Ragnaros just can't push out at all. There is going to be the Gust getting Duck Duck to safety. But they've done it. E-Star have held to get heroic abilities without losing a second Dragon Knight. All right, we come into this phase, and there it is. VP going to be used. We're going to see if we can get the follow-up. There's the roots. Are they going to lock it down? The combo not quite hitting, but it doesn't matter. As they have more than enough to finish it off. The resets, can we go in? Modern Life has used his adaptation. He is going to get the heal up from that and walk away. But the stalemate, although Li Ming finally has, or excuse me, ETC is finally locked in Mosh Pit. Expect to see Wave of Force. There it is by Li Ming locked in. Now, the nice thing is, even though Ragnaros was still making the rotation, wasn't there in time, they had Twilight Dream to follow up, and that was all they needed to make sure that Falstad couldn't uh, get away from that situation. So guaranteeing a kill, having to use two long cooldown timers to do so, that's great, Sulfur is smash. Sign gets back behind the wall. It's the best one we've seen in a while. I I'm a fan of that. I mean, they almost secured it. Uh, the, the timing on the, uh, although, wait a minute. Duck Duck having to unleash all of his abilities to make sure and save his life. They're playing super safe. They know that if they give up the resets to Lee Ming, then it can be pretty deadly. And so super safe play between uh, the Gargantuan, the Mighty Gust, just uh, stay alive for now. Savage is scaring me because he's up in the top lane versus Dahaka. E or, uh, ETC is starting to rotate up too. This might be a kill on Zeratul for Tempest as the rotations come in. E-Star very, very desperate to get a Dragon Knight but do not want to lose somebody in the process. False said, if you look at the minimap, False said is stationary. He is waiting. He's like, yeah. you make the call, I'll be there. And so right now it looks like they're going to back off from that. False said he's going to look to re-engage out in the lane. But without him showing, you know, you don't know whether he's coming or not if he's standing next to a minion wave. Eastar may just simply have to start pushing in a lane somewhere if they can't get the right kills to get a Dragon Knight. But this is beautiful play from Savage. Lockdown gets taken out. 
There is uh, a little bit of action. Vorpal Blade, Seeker in the Dark. Good combo, good follow-up. Xerosol getting that takedown. That's big for them. It's even. Five kills to five. A little bit of ex experience advantage for Tempest. But right now, it looks like we're going to have both uh, uh, shrines channeled here for E-Star. Yeah, but it's Lee Ming and Malfurion. and they can't yeah. contend with Nazebo, Rhaegar, and ETC in the bottom. It's so tough for E-Star just to get a Dragonite, even with the kill on one of the globals on Falstad. It has been a difficult situation. They're losing out on experience just slightly, but they're almost there. So Furious Smash, Power Slide in, Mosh Pit, uh, Ancestral Healing, though, does connect. So, so, so does Twilight Dream, though. All right, Dahaka's joined on the backside. We see Murden going in, but the tongue lands onto him and not on his counterpart. So able to stay alive there. The great cleanse on that as well to make sure Ragnaros didn't get caught in, but interrupts all around. Teams are throwing it down this time. A lot more action than we had last game. And here we go, the rotation down. But the rotation back up with that global. False Edge is going to go up there and continue to soak. He does have to be careful of that man right there if he opts to follow. There are two very important heroic abilities from either side still up despite the big trade on those heroics, and that is Void Prison and Gust for Tempest. E-Star trying to siege as much as they can in the bottom lane. If they can start to open up some structures then, maybe they force uh, slower rotations for Tempest as best they can because it's just not working right. Uh, unless they can get more kills, they've only ever been able to get one at a time, and it's just not quite enough at this point to get a Dragon Knight. So, so far, neither team has really been able to take this huge advantage yet. You know, we've gotten a few picks, we've seen the Dragonite come out, but it hasn't really been that consequential just yet. And you can see teams starting to prioritize the camps. Ragnaros started that one at the top left. And you got to start establishing map control in different ways, and you can do that with the camps on the battleground. So right now, as you can see, the spiders are just terrorizing anybody. And the Zebo full spider build at 1, 4, and 7, those can get pretty dangerous. Might be a timing window with the Bruisers and Ragnaros up in top. But the Haka with Primal Aggression is just your worst enemy as a laner. Still, though, Ragnaros is going to take the time to go up to the top. Zeratul ever watchful to see if Falstad's going to fly up there, too. But at the same time, this is going to be both shrines channeled for a little bit for Eastar. All right, X going in again, putting the damage on to Lockdown, but sign the BP. Oh. It is long enough. Oh! oh! oh. It is long oh. enough to channel that as he did. Mighty Gust just uh, not in time or just missing it. It was kind of like right at the same there. But first Dragonite on the side of e -Star for them. And uh, 10 and a half minutes in, we'll see. They can get a little bit out of this. Man, I would have been so mad if that Gust connected and stopped. <laughs> Stalled that out. Finally, E-Star getting a break, a big break in this game to get a Dragonite. They can open up this battleground significantly, provided that they don't just like outright lose the Dragonite. There is taking a lot of damage, but the sieging is happening uh, both in a bot and a little bit in the top two. Ragnaros trying to push back to Haka once again. Yeah, sometimes it's just a matter of getting the lanes pushed out in multiple lanes. And right now, that's what they're doing. Bottom got pushed out a little bit. Mid's going to go. Maybe it was a little bit too aggro a little early on. We're going to see the rotation up, see if they can get value elsewhere. But either way, you, you afforded yourself that advantage. You now have a slight experience lead in your favor, which you haven't had all game. And now it is for you as level 16 online for E-Star. Yeah, to Haka clearing out the rest of Savage's Dragon Knight. And SW going to kick off the bruiser phase, the murking phase that happens after a Dragon Knight. Still, E-Star have had trying to keep Xing Chen and SW in this bottom lane and then rotating in any support that they can get to try to take down that for the structures. Push back the Zebo to make sure you can't get the free poke. Meanwhile, Tempest, they did lose the Dragon Knight, but they have stayed right caught up in experience. 16 here for Tempest as we see uh, taking a look at some of the talents. A couple of them holding on for just a moment. We'll see what they have to go with here in a moment. But the bottom knight can't push it in. This fort should be going down. Zing C now with, he's got Mirror Ball. That's a few more magic missiles shooting in. But they're going to have to back off, actually. The power slide in. H taking a bit of damage on the back side. The roots go in, but the Mighty Gust, Gilly. Oh, Mighty Gust. There's cleanse on Shake Chen so he can get back. But Malfurion eliminated so quickly. Void Prison only hitting one. So Fury Smash not hitting hide in time the BP did not connect or did not drop Savage the next to fall yeah good play by Falstad and a little bit of miscommunication or mistiming on the side of E-Star so a few picks there for Tempest open things up just a little bit here at the 13 minute marker not a bad fight for them I thought it was gonna start out really well for E-Star because they the flight in from Falstad was caught from uh, Bruce 
beautifully placed roots by SW, but having to devote a lot just to get Xing Chen out of a weird situation there and then losing Malfurion will give Tempest not only some time to get the lanes pushed back in their direction and um, be getting some mercenary camps too, but catch them up in experience. All right, H is uh, basically looking for any rotation of signed walks through there. Uh, Zeratul back up now. Shrine's activating. We'll see if this continues to go this back and forth. Seven kills to five in favor of Tempest. Again, no team really, we only have one fort down in about 14 minutes. It's just uh, teams, they're being aggressive, but it's like a, a very passive approach at the same time. But there was a little bit of aggression. False that fly to the top. We'll see if we take a look at that here in just a second. Just barely is the stop. There's still fear smash. H staying strong on top of this point. Finally, Dwarf tossing away. Tiger is the next one to maybe fall. Gargantuan comes out. And another kill on Ragnaros. There's the power of the Globals. They turn the team fight. The rest of the team rotated up while Li Ming and Malfurion not able to make it up there in time. So another pick there. The power of the Globals will continue to reign. <laughs> X being sniffed out. It's nice you want to hang out there. X being very aggressive. Twilight Dream. Can he get the heal? Savage, does uh, he get it? No, oh. he does not. They Feels at least bad. got the Nazebo kill, but that means it's still a man advantage for Tempest. Eastar now starting to lose out on the lane significantly, ETC rotating up for Dahaka. The problem came in there that there are mercenary camps pushing for Tempest, and Eastar was trying to do everything. They wanted to defend the mercenary camps. They also wanted to be able to contest one of the shrines, but they got really spread out, and Again, when you have its double global, Tempest can turn any situation into a man advantage when E-Star are spread out. They're not out of it yet. They have lost one port. Tempest, though, starting to gain uh, control of this game, starting to look toward their Storm talents. Zingxi rotating down, obviously not able to get the pick there. Lockdown playing extremely safe there, and rightfully so. The rest of the team starting to join him at the bottom. Slight experience advantage in favor of Tempest as level 20 is close. We talked about the potential for level 20 on this battleground. It looks like we're going to get level 20 in them some. As the roots of Sulfurus Smash not able to secure the kill despite that pinpoint accuracy. And so ETC able to walk away from that. Oh, even a meteor to be used. Xing Chen still trying to go around. Lucian was going for the flank too. Jumping in. Lockdown looks to be the key. Molten Core is going to be used, but everyone gets out of the swing range in time. It... it it's weird because they obviously wanted to try and secure the kill. They're not going to get that. And with level 20, he's going to cancel that and get out of there as we see X going in. He's going to put a little bit of pressure onto Dahaka, but he's going to be able to heal up pretty easily. X taking a bit of damage. There's the blink out. But uh, oh. looks like he's got friends okay. that want to party. That's Void Prison used. Not even going to try uh, at this point to, to follow up. Nobody's there in time. Oh. Sign uses Mosh Pit. That's not going to work either. Uh... This might work, though. That's a beautiful drag ice block for Malfurion, but it's only a matter of time. Power slide, Malfurion down. Lucian in the back line trying to make it a one for one. Maybe can get modern life, though, Jay Howe. Yeah, we see the brush locker going in. The timing not quite there as it was before. So Fury Smash misses everything as Dahaka hadn't quite surfaced yet. A DK has been picked up, level 20 here, and it is a 5v4. Things starting to open up for Tempest here in the late game. Uh, that was a, probably a very frustrating zombie wall for Lucian. <laughs> uh, just jumping right in there. And now Tempest up 20. We uh, did see Epic Mount for Falstad, but it's Essence Claws for Dahaka, which is why he was able to get uh, those slow downs on uh, Zeratul there. And with Void Prison out of the picture, only wave of force for Xing Chen. They're going to try to defend this as best they can, push away the members of uh, uh, Tempest with their melee heroes so that Xing Chen can just throw all the abilities at the Dragon Knight very quickly. Yeah, Molten Core was used, you know, just a few minutes ago, or a li little less than a few minutes ago. That's why we don't have it available there. But level 20 also here for E-Star. Malfurion back up. Now, you kind of wonder, like, all right, what is E-Star doing wrong? Why is this not working? And it's not necessarily the macro game. They're playing great rotations. It's just they're not getting the picks. They were a little bit short on the ETC kill. They were a little bit out of position here. They just need to shore things up, tighten it up just a little bit. Get your positioning down. Get the follow-ups as we see H waiting in the bushes, looking for anybody to come out of there. As the DK, it's not a, a target you can get directly on. <laughs> yeah, Dragon Knight, not the uh, best one, but just anchoring, if nothing else, trying to slow down rotations. Maybe if they can get a catch, they've got Xing Chen there. But importantly for E-Star, again, all of their keeps still available. 
And when you have a Zeratul, there is always the chance that you will just obliterate a team fight. Yeah, you're just waiting for that one moment. That one moment that you get that kill, you get the resets. You know, they've opened up the bottom lane already. It, it, even if you get a full team wipe, I'm not sure if you can get it. The later they go, the, the longer uh, the death timers. But they definitely, if they get that one pick, they, they can rotate it into a couple. Then you can look for them to be far more aggressive. But right now, they're just kind of playing Tempest game. And it's almost to a, stall, a stalemate, despite the fact that it's 10 kills to 6. But you now have to focus on sign 2, because just like Void Prison has the possibility of being able to take out a team fight in an instant, so too does a Bolt Mosh. Yeah, Bolt Mosh is terrifying. I mean, you've got so many options available for ETC. You just got to make sure that he lands those, not winds up in a zombie wall like he did last time with that. Well, with Mod uh, Mighty Gust, if Lockdown can get the right fly gust, we've seen, uh, yet I think it was yesterday, there was a gust into a corner that was devastating. Add a Bolt Mosh to that, and that very well could be game over for E-Star. Basically hit the reset button at level 20. H coming over. Side, he's going to try and sniff this out. He might bite off a little bit more than he can chew. There's the power slide in. His team isn't necessarily there. But false that flying into the backside. Modern Life is joined as well. So a couple of globals have been used. Ragnaros nowhere near. H has got to be very careful as we see Lee Ming continuing to try and put shots in. Avatar needs to be used. There it is. He's staying alive for the moment. Savage turning to rotate around the side is sniffed out, diving back in. If you could get a great Void Prison, that oh. might be the start. There is two. Two-man Void Prison. Tiger moves in. X missed his blink over the wall, but there it goes. The Twilight Dream going in a little bit too far as Malfurion blows up. They've got to be very careful here. If they lose too much, Molten Core oh. attempted to be used, and it was canceled out. Submerge is used. Tiger got to go down. That is two members down for E-Star and things again looking good for Tempest. Oh man, you do not want to submerge when there's a zombie wall waiting for you when you come <laughs> back up. That is Dawn of the Dead situation. E-Star losing to Tempest, wanting to take a keep with these long respawn timers. You have Lee Ming. It's great poke potential. You're basically forfeiting a keep here. If you lose one to two members, it is game over. Play safe, play smart. Giving up a keep here is not the worst thing that can happen. Giving it up quickly, though, as they're doing now, not with that poke there, as we see X trying to secure the kill. The spider's on him. They are posturing for the core, though, Gilly. Yeah, e are doing everything they can. Lucian uses Hardened Shield just to buy as much time. They still need a little bit longer. Malfurion will be up in a few seconds, but it's a long time until Ragnaros will be. There's a gust, Ancestral Healing 2. Lucian taken out. Xing Chen starting to run down on mana. Savage going to be the next one to jump back in. He dove out the other side, but he's greeted by Sign. SW is back up, but it's not going to be enough, I don't think, as the shields are down. We are at 75% and falling as Tempest has taken one fight, rotated it over, and now we'll be taking a 2-0 lead, or will we? Well, the core is at 30%. All the members of Tempest still standing, so I would say we will <laughs> be going up 2-0 in this series. That is Tempest playing patiently, but playing their global game, having a lot of comfort picks there. I can't stress enough having Lockdown on his false stat. It was just, I mean, if you go back to last year, Lockdown and Falstad, they were basically synonymous. We continue to see a lot of plays made by him as well. The fight didn't start the way that they wanted there at the bottom of the night camps. Ragnaros late to the party, and uh, Tempest now looking at a 2-0 lead here in this best of five. Yeah, like you said, E-Star was doing everything they possibly could, but when you have a double global against you and then also a strong team fighting composition, Everything has to be to perfection, and the picks started off once again for Tempest, just like in game number one, and that really set the stage for Tempest to continue that momentum throughout the game. It's been tough. I mean, they, we see what they're trying to do. They're just not getting it done. You know, Sulfira smash hit at times, and then at other times it missed. It's a very difficult skill shot to make. That's why we saw a lot of Varian play. Obviously, with the changes to Varian, we won't see it as much. So you have to create opportunities to make those, and we saw Void Prison. It wasn't released in time. We saw the blink. If you actually were to go back and watch that bottom fight, Zeratul hit. He went in deep. He goes to blink over the wall, except he, he he didn't click far enough, and he actually ended up on the inside, and it really kind of disrupted a lot of their rotation. So one misplay, a very aggressive play that was almost unnecessary, but as we we just talked about, there's Lockdown himself. Yeah, getting Lockdown on Falstad is always going to be a great feeling for the team, especially on a battleground where he's so influential. Once he had Epic Mount, he was everywhere. Let's be honest, he was everywhere right from the get-go <laughs> on this game. But that does put Tempest up 2-0 in this best of five, one game away from getting a rematch versus L5. We're gonna head to a break and when we come back, we'll have game number three.